Hello and welcome to my Windwalker PvP guide for Shadowlands. It's been a while since I've made one of these, but I'm feeling a little bit more motivated. Dragonflight's around the corner and I figured I'd make a guide, what the hell. I'm going to follow a structure similar to the video I made back in Legion. I'll sort out the timestamps and everything later so you can skip ahead if you like. The first thing I'm going to do is talk about all of the monk abilities. I'm going to cover every single one and if there are any little tricks with any of the abilities I'm going to cover them as well. I'm going to skip over the talents and then I'll talk about that in the talent section. First up we have Blackout Kick. This is just one of your filler abilities. It spends Chi, which is your resource. You generate that by using Tiger Palm. Blackout Kick is just the filler. You want to use this when you don't have anything else to press. You've got your other two spenders, Rising Sun Kick and Fist of Fury. And all you do is use that when you don't have Sun Kick or Fist of Fury available. And it lowers the cooldown of both of those abilities. Pretty simple. Next up is Crackling Jade Lightning. This ability does negligible damage, but it's used for keeping people in combat, triggering combat on yourself so that you don't get sapped. Uh, and it also has a knockback component. So if you get attacked in melee while you're channeling it, it'll knock the target back. A trick for getting that knockback to work on demand against melees is basically walk them over to a cliff or something, and then you can incapacitate them, face them towards the cliff, and then channel Jade Lightning, and when they turn around and hit you, their auto attack will trigger and it'll knock them back straight away. Next up is Detox. This just removes poison and disease effects. There are an abundance of these effects in the game. You can remove Serpent Sting from Hunters, Sepsis from Rogues, and also any other Rogue Poison, Infected Wounds from Druids, any DK disease, including uh, Unholy Blight. Overall, really good utility from this spell that you should use as much as you can. Expel Harm. This does a moderate amount of healing on a 15 second cooldown, and it generates one chi, however it generates two if you're specced into the reverse harm PvP talent. You pretty much use this on cooldown, generates chi for you at a more efficient energy rate as opposed to Tiger Palm, which costs 50 energy. Interesting thing about Expel Harm is it's actually on a shorter global cooldown than every other spell. So when you run up to someone and you start hitting them, you notice a one second global cooldown timer. When you press Expel Harm, it's actually faster. You can use that to generate Chi in the middle of your burst and save a little bit of time. Next up we have Fortifying Brew. This is one of your defensives. It'll grant you 15% increased health and you take 15% less damage. This is really cool because it has synergy with Touch of Karma, which is your other defensive, which gives you a shield based on your max health. If you combine it with Fortifying Brew first, then you actually get a bigger Karma Shield, which can be helpful if you know, you're getting run down by you know, multiple people and you're going to need all of your defensives, you can Fort Brew first and then use Karma after to get a bigger shield. In PvE situations, you can Fortifying Brew and then uh, Touch of Death to get more damage from your Touch of Death. It's, you know, if you don't ever think you're going to need that defensive, you can do it. But uh, yeah, little trick with that. Next up, we have Leg Sweep. This is your stun. It stuns for 3 seconds in PvE and 5 seconds in PvP. Has a 1 minute cooldown and a 6 yard range. As with any sort of AoE spell similar to Leg Sweep or Spinning Crane Kick, it gets a slightly increased range if you jump. I can showcase this by using Crane Kick quite easily. At this range you can see Spinning Crane Kick is not hitting, but if I jump, it starts hitting. Just to showcase that again. Not hitting, starts hitting after I jump. So it's the same thing with Leg Sweep. If you jump, you can get a decently increased range on it. And it's quite nice. Paralysis, this is your incapacitate. It lasts for 4 seconds on players, or for a minute in PvE. 20 yard range, 30 second cooldown. This is what you'll use to either cross CC in Arena, or you can use it to set up kills by essentially locking a target down, and then you can walk over to them, pop all your cooldowns, Leg Sweep them, and start dealing damage. It's nice to lock them down so, you know, they don't use defensives or slip away or something like that when you want to do damage to them. There is one trick with Paralysis that I don't use as often now because the cooldown has been increased. It used to be 15 seconds, but it actually refreshes your Disable slow. Disable gets automatically reapplied when you melee attack, but for whatever reason, it also triggers off Paralysis. As you can see, it just refreshes there can be a little bit helpful if you need to reapply a slow and also peel like a melee off your healer, let's say, in arena. So if you don't want to get close to them, or you can't get close to them, you can paralysis them. It'll refresh that slow. Provoke, pretty simple, it's just a taunt. Similar to uh, Crackling Jade Landing, you can just use that to trigger combat on people. And what's nice is on a really short cooldown, 
and it doesn't have a global cooldown. So you can be hitting one person and then let's say there's a rogue running away, you can quickly target them and taunt them and it doesn't disrupt your rotation. Resuscitate, very simple, it's just a uh, resurrect spell, you can use it in arena. If you ever find an opportunity to resurrect someone you can go for it. Pretty nice to have this because if there's a situation where someone is running from you and you can't get them to come out and hit you, you can just start casting a resurrect on your partner and bring them out. If they don't stop it then your partner comes back alive and you know things get a lot harder for them. Next is Roll. This is one of your mobility spells. Simply just travels you a short distance. Not much else to it. Spinning Crane Kick. This is your AoE spell. Spinning Crane Kick will deal increased damage based on the amount of targets you've hit in the last 20 seconds. There's a number on the tall tip of Spinning Crane Kick where you can see how many targets you've tagged in the last 20 seconds and that stacks up to five times. And the more targets you tag, the more damage Spinning Crane Kick will deal. Cool thing you can do with Spinning Crane Kick is you can use it while moving, right? So you can combine it with Roll and cover a decent distance and try and find people that are in stealth. Hunters, rogues, druids, so on and so forth. Tiger Bomb. Mentioned this before, it's your generator, you use it to generate chi, and it has a chance to make your next black eye kick cost no chi. Touch of Death, this is an execute. When a player reaches 15% HP, you can use this on them, and it will almost always instantly kill them. It can be survived, you know, if someone were to use a life cocoon, like from a Mr. Weaver, maybe a rapture shield plus pain suppression from a priest and they can live it. It's not a guaranteed kill, but it does a lot of damage. And for someone being at 15% HP, they're going to need a lot of defensive stuff to survive it. But basically, someone will hit 15%, you press this, and they die. However, it does have a slight problem, which you will probably notice after a while of playing Windwalker, is it doesn't immediately trigger. I think the way it works is, when you drop someone to 15% HP, the next attack that you do to them, under 15% HP, will trigger Touch of Death. It doesn't immediately trigger when their health gets there, it's when you hit them after their health gets there. This can be a problem when you're in between auto attacks or you're out of energy. The touch of death will just seem really unresponsive, so keep that in mind. But basically after you press it, someone dies most of the time, and you also get three cheers for you to walk through, and that looks like this. You can walk through them, pick them up, and it will give you one cheat per one. Next up is Transcendence, and Transcendence Transfer. So, Transcendence leaves a spirit behind, which you can leave behind pillars, or in a safe spot somewhere, and you can use it to essentially swap places and teleport. This is especially nice when you have access to a place that's really hard to get to, or frustrating to get to, for instance, uh, Blade's Edge Arena. If you leave your portal on top of the bridge, and then jump off, and they chase you down, then you teleport back up, they have to walk all the way around. So you can use it to sort of juke people, trick people, survive, right? It's a big part of Windwalker's survival toolkit. Transcendence is huge. But you can also use it offensively. On other monks or warlocks who leave Demonic Circle down, you can leave your portal on top of theirs, and whenever they start running, you can chase them. Next is Vivify. This is your on-demand heal. You can use it on yourself, you can use it on other people. It does a small amount of healing, and it's relatively spammable. Very nice when you're running away, you need to heal yourself. This is what you'll be pressing, alongside Expel Harm. Mystic Touch, this is just a passive that makes people take 5% increased physical damage, not just from you, but from everyone. Now we're going to talk about the Windwalker specific stuff. So we have Disable, this is your slow. When you apply it to someone, it slows them for 8 seconds. When you auto attack them, it'll refresh it. And if you press Disable on someone who is slowed by any slow, it doesn't have to be yours, you can root them in place for 3 seconds, then 1.5, and, and then 0.75. Disable also has cool synergy with Flying Serpent Kick, which I'll specifically talk about in a second, but basically you can use that, land on people, and then immediately slow them and root them. Nice and quick, good for chasing people and, you know, immediately planting them in one spot. Next we have Fist of Fury. This is a big portion of your damage, especially when you hit multiple people with it. It does damage over the course of 4 seconds and the channel time is reduced by haste. So right now it's 3.7. But if I Tiger Palm and proc my 30% haste buff, it drops down to 2.9. Next up is Flying Serpent Kick. This will make you travel in a straight line for 1.5 seconds at a pretty high speed. And when you press it again, everything around you will be slowed by 70%. So you press it once, travel, press it twice, stop. 
one thing I would like to mention about Flying Servant Kick is the landing does do damage. It's not a lot of damage, but it does do damage. This means that, let's say you use Paralysis on someone from a distance and you want to catch up to them and you don't have Roll, but you have a Serpent Kick and you want to get to them. Problem is, if you Serpent Kick and land on them with it, it will break the Incapacitate. And if you don't want them to have any chance of slipping away, what you do is use a Cancel or a Macro. I'll cover the Macro later, but basically it allows you to do this. Serpent Kick in, and not trigger the damaging component of Serpent Kick. Don't break the Paralysis. Next up is Invoke Swin. This will summon a target for 24 seconds that attacks your target, and strikes three enemies nearby with AoE Lightning. Also, while Zwin is out, Every 4 seconds, 10% of the damage you deal will be dealt in bursts by Zwen. So if you do 100,000 damage in 4 seconds, after those 4 seconds finish, Zwen will do 10k damage. Then the timer resets, and in the next 4 seconds, however much damage you deal, will be dealt at the end of that 4 seconds. Next up is Rising Sun Kick. This does a decent amount of damage and also puts a Mortal Strike debuff on the target, which makes him take 25% less healing. Pretty much always want to keep that up. Rising Sun Kick is a big part of your rotation. Spear Hand Strike, this is your interrupt. It will lock people out for 4 seconds when you press it on a 15 second cooldown. Storm, Earth, and Fire. This is your main burst cooldown. When you press it, it splits you into 3, and each image of you will deal 45% of your original damage, resulting in a 35% damage increase. The first time you press Storm, Earth, and Fire, your clones will spread out and hit whatever they want. And then the second time you press it, they will hone in on your target and then focus all of your damage on that person. While they're doing it, you can swap it around, swap them to whatever target you want to. And that's how you focus your damage when your Storm with the Fire clones are out. You do have to monitor who they're hitting because, you know, if your clones are hitting something you don't want them to hit, you want to swap them off it. So, first tap will spread them out, second tap will focus them on one target. One thing to mention about Storm Earth and Fire is when you press it the first time and your clones start hitting, you know, multiple targets, you can actually use this to build up your crane kick stacks. So if I hit this guy, my clones will run around and start building up stacks in my crane kick. So you can use this in like battlegrounds and stuff where you pop Storm Earth and Fire, throw out a couple of tiger palms, who generate five stacks of your crane kick, and your crane kicks will start hitting really hard. But after they've run around and started, you know, tagging everything, once you're done and you've reached five stacks, focus them back in on one target and then do your damage. The reason why you want to do this is because there's a con to it that increases your damage after you fixate them. You can leave it if you want and just have your clones run around and hit stuff, but if you want to maximize damage on one target, especially in Arena, you pretty much always want to do that. You always want to focus them. Next we have Touch of Karma. This is one of your big defensives. It absorbs 50% of your maximum health and redirects 70% of the damage you take while it's up to the target that you use Karma on. It's got a 20 yard range which is pretty generous, so from here I can press Touch of Karma and whatever damage I take will get redirected. It is a physical debuff which means it can be removed by physical immunities or overall immunities like Divine Shield, Blessing of Protection and Ice Block. It can't be dispelled, however the damage component which happens over 6 seconds, can be dispelled. Not a big deal, and most people don't even dispel it anyway. But when you come across Paladins and Mages, just be wary that your Touch of Karma is most likely going to get removed by a Blessing of Protection, maybe even an Ice Block if you're in trouble. Next is Afterlife. This is just a small heal that triggers whenever you kill something. It just spawns a sphere on the ground. If you walk through it, you take a little bit of healing. Mastery. Your abilities deal increased damage when your abilities are not a repeat of the previous. Just want to point this out, a lot of your abilities have a big cooldown, right? Sun Kick is 10 seconds baseline, Fist of Fury is 24. The only abilities you're ever going to have a chance of repeating are Tiger Palm, Blackout Kick, and Crane Kick. Repeating a Tiger Palm or a Blackout Kick isn't a big deal. You're never going to repeat a Sun Kick because of the cooldown, you're never going to repeat a Fist of Fury because of the cooldown, so don't overthink the mastery. If you Tiger Palm to Ice, it's not a big deal because Tiger Palm does negligible damage. Same thing with Blackout Kick. If you want to repeat it to get your Fist of Fury back faster or something, go for it. And lastly, we have Wind Walking, which just gives you and your party a 10% increased move speed. And with all the spells wrapped up, that leads us into the Talents. So, for the Talents, this is something that you can run pretty much all the time and you'll never go wrong. 
the main thing you'll switch between is Diffuse Magic and Dampen Harm. You use this for physical damage and you use this for magic damage. But I'm going to talk about each row specifically. First up, we have Eye of the Tiger, which applies a small damage dot to your target when you Tiger Palm them. It's a very small amount of damage and overall not really going to amount to anything. And that is the general theme with this talent row. None of these are going to do any sort of big damage or anything. It's kind of just there. Chi Wave, this does the most raw damage on the tier. It just shoots out a little Chi Orb that bounces between enemies and friendly targets. In arenas and battlegrounds, I find that this just jumps to random people, and I've had it break crowd control occasionally and stuff like that. However, in 1v1 situations, it is actually quite nice in terms of just raw healing output. It does the most. So, if you care about that, just maximizing your healing in like a 1v1 or something, then you can run Chi Wave. Or if you just want like another button to press, you can run it. Lastly, we have Chi Burst, which I personally think is the best by far. Not for its damage output, but for the extra utility it gives. First off, it's the only talent on the row that generates Chi. It generates one Chi per target you hit. So right now I have no Chi. If I lob one out, two Chi. Another thing it's useful for is finding stealth targets in Arena. So at the start of an Arena match against Rogue Mage, any sort of hunter team, druid teams, anything like that where the enemy team starts in stealth. You can just look somewhere, guess where they are, throw out a chi burst and see if you get them. And if you find them, then that's going to be nice for you because you can ruin their opener basically. So you just pick a, pick a spot in the arena and there you go. Lastly, I want to talk about the cast time of chi burst. I've had people interrupt chi burst at like 2200, 2400, but a lot of people interrupt this spell, despite the fact that it's not even important. At your average ratings, people will interrupt Chi Burst. I've had people like use Counter Spell, long cooldown interrupts on Chi Burst for some reason. I think it's because it's such a wild card and no one sees it, they think it's dangerous, but it does 1k damage. So if you're in a situation where you cast a Chi Burst and a mage kicks it, your healer, if you're playing with one, no longer has to worry about an interrupt. And the last thing about the cast time I want to mention is I talked about how you can use it to generate chi. A big part of Windwalker at the moment is you can't target palm your kill target until you're ready to do damage because of a legendary called Key for Skyreach. When you target palm a target, they take 50% increased crit damage. You don't want to target palm someone until you're ready to do damage. Otherwise, you proc that and then you have to wait one minute. The problem is you need to target palm to generate chi on demand anyway. You can generate Chi every 15 seconds with Expel Harm, but out of combat you'll start losing Chi. So your only other option is either Fist of the White Tiger, which is a little bit later, and Chi Burst. So you can use this to generate Chi. Either you run out of the gates and like immediately throw it on someone and just generate the third Chi you need to do your burst, and three Chi is the minimum you need to do burst as a Windwalker. Or what you can do is actually immediately start your burst rotation and use Chi Burst in it while you're starting it up. So what that would look like is you run over to someone, incapacitate them, let's say I'm, I've got two Chi, I walk up to them, Chi Burst them, and then Leg Sweep, and that way you don't leave a gap between the incapacitate and the Leg Sweep, and you still get the extra Chi, and then you would Tiger Palm, Sun Kick, Burst of Fury. So overall I think Chi Burst is a straight up winner here. You can bait kicks with it, you can generate extra chi to do your burst more cleanly, and overall it's just got way more utility than the other two options on a talent row where none of the damage matters. So I would suggest picking this. I will say though, don't cast a chi burst if you're in danger. If you get locked on nature, you can't use your teleport, so just avoid doing that. Next we have Celerity, Chi Torpedo, and Tiger's Lust. Now Tiger's Lust is the most safe option here. It gives you the only option that allows you to remove roots and snares. So if you get frost novered, mass entangled, steel trapped, or if your partner gets put in any of those, you can immediately put it on them, give them a sprint buff, and it removes those movement impairing effects from them. Tiger's Lust is never a bad pick, and this is the one that you can consistently stay with and always know it's good. It allows you to counter Boomkins, when they drop Root Beam on your healer, you can Tiger's Lust them out of it. 
If your partner is getting run down, you can give them Tiger's Lust to help them get away. It's just got the most utility. Another option is Celerity. So this gives you a 15 second cooldown roll and three charges. This in combination with the Wind Waker PvP talent and Tumbling Technique Conduit, which gives you a chance to refund roll when you blackout kick, can lead to you having pretty solid mobility. Now what Wind Waker does is whenever you use rolls or serpent kicks, you build up movement speed. So right now my wind walking effect is 10%. If I roll, it'll go up to 20. And if I roll again, it'll go up by another 10%. So now I'm moving at 152%. I do have some speed on my gear. But yeah, it gives you a stacking movement speed increase. On top of that, every time you roll, people in your wind walking aura and you will be cleansed from slows. So you move faster, everyone around you moves faster. This can be really fun in BGs and stuff if you can afford to drop reverse arm. And it also procs off your serpent kick, right? So you can keep this up for a very long time. And lastly we have Chi Torpedo. This replaces your roll and basically it travels further and gives you a little sprint buff at the end of it. Again, in combination with a tumbling technique conduit, you can actually refund rolls on blackout kicks. So this works for Cheetor Peter as well, so if you get a refund on a Cheetor Peter, you can keep sprinting for quite a while. But obviously, you know, you are giving up the root break and the snare break from Tiger's Lust, so... I would say stick with Tiger's Lust, but try and, you know, mess around with these and see if you enjoy it with the Wind Waker tumbling technique combination. Next up is the 30 talent here. We've got Ascension, Fist of the White Tiger, and Energizing Elixir. Most people are going to run Fist of the White Tiger because it generates Chi. I was talking about the Kiefer's thing and how you need to generate Chi for your burst without proccing the debuff on people. But with Fist of the White Tiger you can do that and immediately generate all the Chi you need for bursting just with one button. Now if you like that ease of burst and you don't really want to do like the whole Chi burst thing, then you can play with Fist of the White Tiger and have some fun with that. But I want to talk about something that makes Ascension pull ahead in my opinion. So Ascension gives you an extra Chi to work with, 20 max energy, and a 10% increase to energy regen. Fist of the White Tiger saves energy by generating more Chi for less. Ascension just gives you more energy. This means that you can spam Vivifies way more frequently with Ascension than you can with Fist of the White Tiger. So I'll, uh, I'll demonstrate that. I'll see how many Vivifies I can do with Fist of the White Tiger. I think it's about four. Oh, that one didn't cost energy. One, two, three, four. Yep, and by four you're already like waiting for your energy to come back. Now I'll compare that to Ascension at max energy. One, two, three, four, five, six. So two more vivifiers, and the gap between vivifiers when you're out of energy will be shorter because of the increased energy region. That benefit is more apparent when you're playing double DPS or if you're, you know, doing solo stuff, right? Because if you teleport behind a pillar and you need to heal yourself when you're in a lot of danger, you can spam heal more with ascension. But if you're playing with a healer, you're not casting vivify that frequently, you don't really care about it then you can play Fist of the White Tiger, but in general, Ascension will give you the survivability boost that Fist of the White Tiger won't, as long as you can deal with the Chi Burst thing. As for Energizing Elixir, I wouldn't recommend it. Technically, it provides you the most output of Vivify healing if you combine that with Vivify spam, but I just don't think it's worth it. It just gives you way too much energy to work with, and it's a long cooldown, and outside of Energizing Elixir, you just feel really sluggish, so I wouldn't recommend it. Next we have Tiger Tail Sweep, Good Karma, and Ring of Peace. Most of the time you'll play Ring of Peace. It just drops a zone on the ground that people will get knocked back from if they walk into it. You can use this for area denial, you can use this to interrupt casts from people like Polymorph for instance, and overall it's the only one on this tier that's going to give you extra utility. There are some classes that just basically ignore Ring of Peace in the first place though. For instance, something like a Warrior can Bladestorm through it, Death Knights can use Death's Advance and just walk straight through it. 
I find often that high mobility classes like demon hunters can just literally fell rush through it. So against warriors and DKs, maybe you can opt out of this if you find it's not really useful. However, most of the time you'll get some use out of Ring of Peace, even if you can't use it to stop a Death Knight or a Warrior, you can use it to, you know, knock a healer out of line of sight or off a bridge or, you know, deny them from getting into a certain area. You're always going to have use for Ring of Peace. There are some situations where you would get more use out of Good Karma. So Good Karma heals you for the damage you take during Touch of Karma. Now, if you combine that with Fortifying Brew, you get a big Karma shield and the damage you take heals you. So you can Karma low and then it will heal you which can be pretty good. Another thing is good karma healing can actually trigger the proc effect of Bone Dust Brew, the Covenant ability, so you can get even more healing from that. So in a situation where you can't run, you can't escape, and Ring of Peace is going to do anything, you can run good karma and hope that it gives you a little bit of extra survivability. However, in a situation where karma is going to get countered, for instance, Blessing of Protection will remove it, stuff like that, or if it's a comp where they're not going to bother hitting into your karma, like I noticed that Rogue Mage, sometimes they don't break it. Sometimes they just go straight through it, but it's a little bit of a gamble. But when you know your karma is going to break and you know your karma is going to sit, run it. But if your karma is going to get countered by a Blessing of Protection or something, I would say run Ring of Peace because you can probably find some use for that. And then Tiger Tail Sweep, it makes the range of your leg sweep 8 yards, which is enormous and it also reduces the cooldown problem with Tiger Tail Sweep is Monk is basically a one minute class. Your Leg Sweep's a minute cooldown baseline, which lines up with your Kiefer Sky Reach, which lines up with your Burn Dust Brew, and Storm Moth and Fire basically. But Tiger Tail Sweep would turn the Leg Sweep into a 50 second cooldown. If you're waiting for Kiefer's to reset, if you're waiting for Burn Dust to reset, you're not going to benefit from the cooldown reduction of Leg Sweep. However, if you are playing Kyrian Windwalker instead of Necrolord, I'll talk about Covenants later on. But basically, you can opt into playing a sort of Serenity Kyrian build, where you have more frequent leg sweeps, and your second go happens before the two minute marker, when like before people have trinkets back. It's a niche build, but in general, Ring of Peace is like your best choice here. Next up, we've got Inner Strength, Diffuse Magic, and Dampen Harm. Now, you run Diffuse against magic damage, so Warlocks, Mages, Shamans, and then you run Dampen Harm against physical damage, like Windwalkers, uh, Arms Warriors, Fury Warriors, Feral Druids, stuff like that. Inner Strength gives you passive damage reduction, however, Shadowlands is so fast-paced, you're probably not going to get saved by a 10% damage reduction. And, you know, what if you get crowd-controlled and can't refresh the 5-second duration on it? you'll just lose the debuff and you won't get any duration remaining when you actually need it. So, I would stick with either of these. This against magic, this against physical. Next is Hit Combo, Rushing Jade Wind, and Dance of chi Now, if there's anything you know about Windwalker, it's probably that Crane Kick does a lot of damage. Dance of chi is why. It increases the damage of your Crane Kick by 200% when it procs. That's 150 in PvP, but that's still insane. Now combined with the tagging mechanic of Crane Kick, where every target you hit increases Crane Kick's damage, plus the Conduit that increases that effect even further, stack that on top of Kiefer's 50% extra crit, 35% increased damage from Storm Earth and Fire, and then the proc damage of your Covenant ability, you're looking at the most modified damage ability in the game. It just annihilates everything. It's really hard to give up Dance of Chi-Chi. However, you can run Hit Combo if you're not playing Necrolord. If you're playing Kyrian, you can run this for a more consistent damage build. Basically, it just increases your damage by 6%. Now, when you run Kyrian, you can swap out of Calculator Strikes, go into this Fist of Fury damage modifier to get up to 14% increased damage from your Fist of Fury stacked with Hit Combo. And then you can swap out the Necrolord Conduit for Zuen's Bond. And basically, just run like a more consistent damage build that doesn't rely on proccing Dance of Chi-Chi. You could even run Hit Combo as Necrolord and not rely on procs, but procs of Crane Kick can win you games, like straight up. So, if you want the best build, I would say Dance of Chi-Chi. You can have some fun with Hit Combo. Jade Wind, this has been changed and nerfed so many times. It's not good at the moment. It does nowhere near close to the damage of Dance of Chi-Chi, and I don't think it even beats the Hit Combo damage buff, so this isn't worth it at the moment. Finally, we have Spiritual Focus, 
Whirling Dragon Punch, and Serenity. Now, Whirling Dragon Punch is going to be the main choice. This just gives you a finishing ability that you can use after Sun Kick and Fist of Fury. Complements your burst, right? So when you're doing a burst on someone, right, you can like incapacitate them. She burst into a leg sweep, Tiger Palm, Sun Kick, Fist of Fury, and then you finish it with a Dragon Punch. It also helps out your consistent damage a little bit. Now, one frustrating thing about Dragon Punch, which I hate and I wish they would remove, is it knocks you up into the air. It basically crowd controls you when you press it. Just be mindful of that, because if someone's moving really quickly, you kind of don't want to Dragon Punch them. Because let's say someone's running away from you at really fast speed and you're like chasing them, and you're running after them and all of a sudden you just get rooted in place for like one second. They can get away from you in that time and it, it will just suck. So just be mindful of that knock-up effect, but in stuns and stuff it's fine. Your alternative option on the row is Serenity. This replaces Stormwith and Fire. It gives you a slightly less damage increase, so Stormwith and Fire is 35, Serenity is 20. However, your Chi consumers come back a lot quicker, twice as fast. So, if you watch my Sun Kick and Fist of Fury cooldowns during this, you'll see how fast everything comes back. So, my Sun Kick here, Fist of Fury. At the end of it, Sun Kick's gonna be back up. I can Blackout Kick twice. Sun Kick, Blackout Kick, Fist of Fury. And it basically just puts your rotation into overdrive for 12 seconds. You would run this for more of like a gimmicky one-shot build, basically. It only has one charge, whereas Stormwath and Fire has two charges. Now, that becomes a problem with the whole one-minute Kiefer's Burn Dust Leg Sweep setup, because you have to wait 30 extra seconds for Serenity to come back. But, the benefit of Serenity is RNG is more on your side with this. Stormwath and Fire splits your damage into three which means you have to individually crit with each Stormwath and Fire hit to maximize your damage, and, you know, individually proc, let's say, Bone Dust Brew on each individual hit. Whereas Serenity, you only have to do it once. If you crit with a Serenity Sun Kick and then proc Bone Dust Brew, you've already maximized the damage you can do, whereas with Stormwath and Fire, your odds are not great to maximize the damage. But Stormwath and Fire is very consistent, because you'll crit with maybe two out of three, whereas if you don't crit with Serenity, you lose a lot of damage. But I will say that Serenity is much more reliable because it doesn't have to rely on gimmicky pet AI from Stormwath and Fire. If you have trouble with that and you want Windwalker to just feel cleaner, uh, more simplistic, don't have to worry about clones and stuff, you can run Serenity and it does fine. You can play it to high ratings, it's just you kind of have to change the way you play and just monitor that extra 30 seconds on Stormwath and Fire. Sorry, Serenity. And, you know, try not to proc your Kiefer's before Serenity is up, and it, it kind of changes the way you play. So, Serenity for gimmicky one-shots, or if you hate Stormwath and Fire, otherwise, Dragon Punch. Lastly is Spiritual Focus. This doesn't really see use, because games don't really go for long enough to get any benefit from this, and Dragon Punch just complements your burst and helps you get kills. However, I think there's some synergy between this and the Priest Night Fae ability which reduces the cooldown of like your main cooldown, which is Stormwath and Fire. That, in combination with this, can actually give you Stormwath and Fire's back pretty quickly. So, if you want to play around with that, go for it, but in general, it's just these two picks. Finally, let's talk about the PvP talents. These three are going to be your staple choices. Alpha Tiger, this grants you a 30% haste buff for 8 seconds when you Tiger Palm something. Again, this is another modifier on top of Tiger Palm with Kiefer's, so you, when you Tiger Palm a new target, you get 50% crit, 30% haste, right? Absurd stat amounts for free. It also can proc off separate targets, so if you're in a situation where there's like a pet or something, let's say you're hitting one target, you've got this haste buff, you pop out a Fist of Fury, and then your haste buff runs out, you can like tab target to the pet, hit it with a Tiger Palm, proc the crit buff, Sorry, the haste buff, and then go back to hitting your main target. Let's say someone puts down a totem. You can go hit the totem, block the haste buff, keep it going. You can have 30% increased haste for a long, long time. By the time that one runs out, the first one is almost back up, and then you can get the 30% haste again and keep it rolling. Overall, Alpha Tiger is just super, super strong. Complements your burst, complements your sustain damage, complements your healing. 
very good overall. Next up is Turbo Fists. This makes your Fist of Fury deal full damage to all targets hit. By default, it does reduce damage to secondary targets, so 30,000 to main target, 18,000 to secondary. When it comes to hitting multiple people with Fist of Fury, for damage reasons alone, you would take this. However, it applies a 90% slow with this as well, and it makes you parry everything while you're channeling it. I would say Turbo Fist is in general a pretty safe pick for any game, just because, you know, on the chance that people are stacking up and you can cleave with Fist of Fury and get extra damage out, it's just good. All the time it's good. The slow is good, parry is really good against melee cleaves for parrying, it turns this into a defensive. You can use it to peel people off your healers or off your partners by slowing them by 90%. You can force things like Blessing of Freedom or Tiger's Lust or something like that purely with Fist of Fury. And finally we have Reverse Harm. This increases the healing of your Expel Harm by 60% and makes it generate 2 Chi instead of 1, making this a very efficient heal and Chi generator. However, this will be the PvP talent you swap out of if you want to change things up. So if you wanted to play Wind Waker with Celerity, you would swap Reverse Harm. If you come across Death Knights, Fury Warriors, you run Grapple Weapon, you would swap out a Reverse Harm for that. Other PvP talents that can be good, Ride the Wind can be strong if there are a lot of slows that you can't deal with or can't dispel, for instance Chains of Ice from a Death Knight, right? You can use Ride the Wind to counter that. But I think Grapple Weapon might just be better for stopping them when it really matters, but you can, you can play around with Ride the Wind. Pressure Points, you can actually have some fun with this. There's a certain legendary called Fatal Touch. Reduces the corner of touch of death by two minutes. So it drops it to a minute cooldown. And then every touch of death you do reduces Karma's cooldown by 60 seconds, down to 30 seconds. So in a battleground, you run around, touch of death something, lower the cooldown of your Karma to 30 seconds, touch of death the next thing, Karma again. It can be fun. However, giving up Kiefer's is, you know, a bit of a shame. But, you know, if you want to have fun with that, you can. Disabling Ridge can be nice if you're having trouble catching people, gives you a 10 yard range and disable. There's also Tiger Eye Brew. This makes it so that your damage gets turned into nature damage instead, but they go through armor. However, people don't have enough armor to really benefit from this, so basically your options are Reverse Harm, Disabling Reach, Grapple Weapon, Wind Waker, Ride the Wind, maybe Pressure Points and like Battlegrounds or something. Other than that, that's pretty much it. So, now that we're wrapped up with talents, we can talk about legendaries. So, the main one is Kiefer's. already mentioned this. Basically, whenever you Tiger Palm something, it'll apply a 50% crit buff for 6 seconds. This is your main damage modifier and your main source of landing kills. It also gives you incredible mobility by basically allowing you to dash around the place and chase after people. It helps you chase down droids and surprise people with kicks because you can basically you know, teleport onto them and then interrupt them like that. Overall, very versatile legendary. It lines up perfectly with a Necrolord playstyle, so if you're playing Necrolord, I would suggest playing Kiefer's. But for any Covenant, it's a good pick. Next up, Zuen's Treasure. You can run this and have some fun with it. Basically, this is more consistent. Your Fist of Fury makes your Sun Kicks crit more frequently, and your Sun Kick crits reduce the cooldown of Fist of Fury. Overall, ends up being a more consistent damage build. If you don't want to rely on Kiefer's, you can opt into running that. Jade Ignition, you would never run this in PvP. Basically just makes it so that when your Fist of Fury generates stacks and when you crank it, you explode and deal a Chi Explosion. It does a little bit of damage. Overall, not very good. Same thing with Last Capacitor. Basically, you generate stacks when you use Chi Spenders and it buffs your next Crackling Jade Lightning, which is, you know, this thing. It's nerfed by 50% in PvP, and it's never been good. Escape from Reality. So this lets you Transcendence transfer twice within 10 seconds. So you can teleport once like this, and then within 10 seconds you can use it again. The cool thing about this is when you Vivify yourself, it refunds its cost and heals for way more. If you're struggling with survivability, this can actually help you out. Next up is Invoker's Delight. This is really good for Kyrian Windwalkers because the Kyrian Covenant ability works well with haste and stacking that haste bonus on top of your Alpha Tiger haste bonus gives you a bunch of extra damage. Zuen benefits from increased haste as well and when you play Kyrian you get two Zuens for 12 seconds I think. So you've got two Zuens out benefiting from 63% increased haste, it's big damage. For other Covenants though, not really anything special. 
Swift Shore wraps. This is basically useless. During roll, you're immune to roots and snares, but odds are you're probably already snared and your odds of getting rooted in the middle of one are kind of slim. There are some situations, but it's not worth taking this over, like Kiefer's, for instance, so I would ignore that. Fatal Touch, I mentioned the synergy between pressure points, so you can have some fun with that if you want. And then the rest of them are just kind of whatever. As for your Unity Legendaries, this just gives you whatever Covenant-specific Legendary that you can have, and it swaps in between them. So for Necrolord, your abilities just have a chance to proc Burnless Brew on the target. So I'll see if I can make that happen. I might not get a proc, but uh, there's that. There we go. So just procs Burnless Brew for 10 seconds. This can be really good, it's just like a passive increase in your damage. You can proc Burn Dust Brew off of healing yourself. So that'll just give you a little bit of increased healing. And that can be nice. And if you proc Burn Dust Brew when you swap targets with Keepers, so like let's say you're hitting this guy, you've already used your Burn Dust Brew and stuff and you start hitting him, right? Let's say you then swap to another target, proc your Keepers Crit Buff, and then proc Burn Dust here, you'll basically be like you completely reset your first and you're still going. So that can be pretty awesome. For the other covenants, Weapons of Order summons Zwen for 12 seconds. I mentioned that just before. The Night Fae one, this makes it so that when you use Feyline Stomp, your targets will take 8% increased damage and the chance for it to reset is increased from 6 to 12%. Finally, Sinister Teachings. This is for Venthyr Monk. When you press Fallen Order, you summon one Tiger Adept, which is the clone that spawns and does Fist of Fury, he'll be out for the entire time, and then when you crit, the cooldown of the Covenant ability gets lowered by 5 seconds. So, whatever Covenant you're playing, you will get this Legendary, so you don't have to ever think about that. But in terms of what Legendary to pick, I would say, Keepers is a safe choice always. Zuen's Treasure is fun for consistent damage, and if you're getting countered on Keepers a lot, or if you just don't like that 1 minute playstyle, you can be more consistent here. Invoker's Delight for Kiefer's, Fatal Touch if you want, Escape from Reality for Survivability, plus your Unity Legendary on top of that. Now that the Legendaries are wrapped up, we'll talk about Covenants. First up is Necrolord, this is the best Covenant for Windwalker. Basically, when you throw Bone Dust Brew down, targets have a 50% chance to take 40% extra damage or healing. This complements your Leg Sweep, complements your Kiefer's, your Storm of the Fire, you stack all this together, that's how you get your big burst damage. So your burst rotation would be something like incapacitate them, walk up to them, burn the sprue, chi burst, leg sweep, and then pop your cooldowns and start doing damage. By the time that your bonus brew is back, by the time that your leg sweep is back and your keyfers is reset, you know, it all lines up and you can do it again. That's why bonus brew is just basically the best. It just complements the best build for Windwalker at the moment. On top of that, you also get Fleshcraft. It's a really powerful shield. It's nerfed in PvP, I think down to 20% of your HP, but you use it and just gives you a nice shield, helps you live against uh, setups that you can predict, maybe like a Rogue Mage setup in the opener will help you survive a little bit. It gives you an extra school of magic, so if you're in a 1v1 and you want to cast Fleshcraft, you can just heal in someone's face, and when they inevitably kick you on nature, you can cast a Fleshcraft right in front of them. In terms of Conduits, as Necrolord, you always run Calculated Strikes to benefit from Dance of Chi-Chi. You always run Coordinated Offensive as any Covenant, just because it buffs your Stomach and Fire or your Serenity. And as Necrolord, you have to run Bone Marrow Hops because it almost doubles the damage of Bone Dust Brew. Maroleth is the best Soulbind here. You get a base increase of 120% Mastery, which is roughly like 4% increased damage all the time. You get three Endurance Conduits as well, so you can have the Expel Harm Increased Healing, the Vivify Increased Healing, and the Fort Brew Shield. So this is basically what you will run as Necrolord permanently. If you want to, you can opt out of maybe the Vivify Healing Increase for something like Tumbling Technique if you want extra mobility, or maybe Lingering Numbness for the massive Paralysis Slow, but you probably don't need it. Overall, this is a very safe very good option for Necrolord Windwalker. Now I'm going to head over to Ouroboros, swap covenants, and talk about the other ones. Next up is Kyrian Windwalker. So Kyrians get Weapons of Order. This gives you a 12.5% increased mastery buff, which is just 12.5% increased damage. 
it makes it so your sun kick reduces chi cost by one for five seconds and your blackout kicks reduce the cooldown of your sun kick and fist of fury by one additional second this overall is basically 30 seconds of pretty solid damage increase stacked with storm and fire and zwen and stuff you do very good damage for 30 seconds now because of the blackout kick cooldown reduction and the sun kick chi cost reduction this stacks very well with haste modifiers from alpha tiger and also invoker's delight so when you stack both of these together you can use your chi spenders very frequently at a reduced cost as for the covenant specific thing it's basically vial of serenity it heals you for 20 percent of your health and removes diseases poisons curses and bleeds the main benefit here is the bleed effect removal so when a druid opens on you with berserk and he pops sickle of the lion and rip and feral frenzy and rake you can remove all of that with this potion same thing with rogues garrote rupture you can remove them as well overall pretty solid as for soulbind choices you actually have a little bit more choice here so pelagos gives you combat meditation this is nerfed in pvp but basically it's going to result in like a six or seven percent increased damage based off the mastery it gives you stacked on top of the 12.5 percent you get from the ability itself you also get Newfound Resolve, which randomly spawns like this little NPC, and if you look at it, you get 10% increased agility and stamina, which is not bad. As for the conduits, specifically, I don't run this conduit. It gives you 2.5% increased mastery during the Weapons of Order, but I mean, I would prefer to just run Fist of Fury damage increase, or Zoran's Bond over that, or even Calculator Strikes. However, the reason why I'm running these two is because I play this as a consistent build, rather than a Dance of Chi uh, you know, proc build. So you can run Pelagos. Claire is good if you want free crit. So Claire can give you 5% increased crit from Light the Path. You can get an additional 6% from Pointed Courage. And that procs the full effect from your Slumoth and Fire Clones. So they trigger the 2% crit per ally. And then you get 3% crit chance for 10 seconds after you hit something above 90% HP. So you can have an additional, what, 3, 9, 14% extra crit from Claire alone. And then Mechanicos, you get Soul Steel Clamps, which can help you survive at the start of like a Rogue Mage game, because it will reduce the stun duration. You got this, which gives you a stacking passive damage increase on your target. And then this, which deals a bulk amount of damage to your target when you press Weapons of Order. This probably does the most damage during a burst in comparison to like the mastery buff you'll get from Pelagos, and it just always happens. However, it is split in AoE. So if you're fighting something like a Demo Lock where there's pets everywhere, it won't do as much damage to the Warlock. And it's also got that cooldown reduction mechanic. Now, with Tiger Tail Sweep, this talent that reduces Leg Sweep's cooldown, in conjunction with Zuen's Bond, which reduces Zuen's cooldown, and Serenity, you can actually run a sub two minute build where you can have your full burst back before someone has their trinket back. That's this build. You run Mechanicos, Zuen's Bond, and then you run Invokers, and you can play this potentially. So those are your options for Kyrian pretty much. In terms of playstyle differences between Necrolord and this, with Kyrian, you kind of want to pop both of your Stormwind and Fire Charges and keep going while your Zwen's out and while your Weapons of Order is up. And then every two minutes when your Weapons of Order comes back, you use another Stormwind and Fire and keep going like that with your Zwen. It's pretty much the exact same burst rotation as Necrolord with the Sun Kick into Fist of Fury into Dragon Punch. And then outside of that, you just keep on doing your standard rotation. But for Serenity specifically, the cooldown reduction you'll be getting from Weapons of Order, stacked with the haste benefit from Invoker's Delight, gives you a very, very fast rotation. So I'll show you that now. So if I go in, I put Weapons of Order, Alpha Tiger, Serenity, Sun Kick, Fist of Fury, Sun Kick, Black Hair Kick, Sun Kick, Fist of Fury, Sun Kick, Black Hair Kick, Sun Kick, Black Hair Kick, Fist of Fury. That's pretty much what you'll be doing. And that pretty much wraps up Kyrian, so next up is Night Fae. So for Night Fae, you get Feyland Stomp. This is an ability that does, unfortunately, low damage, but uh, when you press it, you get the benefit of your Unity Legendary, 
which grants you an 8% increase in damage. When you use abilities within the Feline Stomp, you have a chance to reset its cooldown. So, just chuck this down. So as I hit it, I'll eventually proc a reset, and I'll be able to use it again. There we go. And there's the debuff. And as you use more abilities while standing in it, you'll get a new reset eventually, and then this helps you stack up your redirected anima stacks, which come from the Naya Soulbind. Now, the topic of Soulbind choices, you have a couple. So, Naya can be good if you're getting a lot of resets, you get a bunch of mastery. I've had up to like 20 stacks of that, so in combination with the 20 stacks of redirected anima, on top of the 8% increase of the Unity Legendary, you're looking at like a 20% consistent damage buff, which is pretty good. That's more damage buff than you would get from Kyrian, but it relies on procs. You also get Cold Shot, so whenever you crit, you get a 20% move speed buff, and also Bonded Hearts, which is going to heal you for 2k every time you press your uh, Phelan Stomp. So you can see in my combat lock here, Phelan Stomp healing, Bonded Hearts healing 2000, passive healing every time you press Phelan Stomp. It's not terrible. Other choices, Dreamweaver, this can be good. This specifically, Soothing Voice, is very strong. You can spam proc this off of Disable and constantly slow people by 90% every time Disable runs off, which is pretty good for peeling. And then there's also Field of Blossoms. So every time you press Phalanx Stomp, you get a 15% haste buff. That, in conjunction with Alpha Tiger and also Zuen's Treasure, can lead to a consistent damage build where you do damage every 30 seconds. So every 30 seconds when you have Phalan Stomp and you have Alpha Tiger up, what you can do is generate all the chi you need, Phalan Stomp, Tiger Palm, Full Fist of Fury Channel, and the Sun Kick. And that's like your consistent damage build. The extra haste from the Field of Blossoms combined with Alpha Tiger leads to a pretty fast channeling Fist of Fury into a Sun Kick and low cooldowns on both of them. So if you want to play like a 30 second consistent damage build, you can play like that. And then also Corrain uh, is kind of just like a consistent damage buff that you get from Wild Hunt Tactics. So you deal more damage to targets above 75%. In general, I would suggest running either Naya for the resets on Phalan Stomp with the Mastery buff, or Dreamweaver for like that 30 second build. As for the Night Fate Conduit, it does increase Phalan Stomp's damage by a lot. So if you come across a Demo Warlock, run this. In BGs, I would say always run this as well. The effect of this is actually pretty big. And this is essentially going to triple the damage of your Covenant ability and actually make it hit hard. So I would suggest running this if you can hit multiple people with it consistently. Otherwise, swap out of that and just go for, you know, Zuen's Bond and uh, Inner Fury. Or Calculator Strikes if you want to play Dance of Chi Chi. On top of that, you also have Soul Shape. And Soul Shape is great. You know, a lot of people use it, you probably already know what it is. Uh, but the good thing is, no one expects a Windwalker to be Night Fae. So what you can do is like, teleport over to someone and interrupt them, right? No one expects the Soul Shape kick. I've had that decide games for me, right? And also just extra mobilities a Windwalker never hurts. So, Night Fae is not terrible, right? I will say this, any Covenant you play is good, right? The main thing that makes Windwalker strong is Kiefer's. Even if you run Kiefer's Night Fae, you know, 50% extra crit stacked on top of the 8% damage bonus from Feyline, you never have to worry about Bone Dust procs. This is a consistent damage build that will never really let you down. But yes, Necrolord will pull ahead of this, but Night Fae can be fun. Lastly, I'm going to talk about Venthyr Monk, which isn't great, but I figure I'll cover it anyway. So for Venthyr Windwalker, Basically, you get Fallen Order, which summons a bunch of Windwalker clone things that come out and Fist of Fury, your kill target, they heal you and they provide you shields. Uh, in order for this to do good damage, you pretty much have to run Imbued Reflections, which is a 80% increase in its damage and healing. And if you're going to play Venthyr, your real only choice for Legendary is, once again, Kiefer's, because the crit buff from Kiefer's actually affects your Fallen Order crit chance. So, in terms of 
passive damage output. I'm pretty sure with just Fallen Order combined with Zwen's Bond, Zwen, you can kill people AFK basically. So if I were to pop Zwen on my target, target farm, proc this. That's a decent amount of damage just for like doing nothing, right? It's a lot of hits coming out and it's solid. However, there's a big glaring problem with this. Where you press Fallen Order from is where the clones come out from. If you pop this here and then the fight starts taking place over here, your clones are going to have to run from that initial spot to get here and then it's just... It's not going to be great because the clones only last for 6 seconds. By the time they get here, start doing their stuff, they'll be gone, right? And also, 3 minute cooldown doesn't really line up with anything nicely. Games often don't even go for three minutes. You get one use out of this and that'll be it. But if you want to line that up with Kiefer's and mess around with it, you can. Dora Shadows can be cool. Again, it's got a different uh, magic score to everything else. So you got a little bit of a teleport, which can be nice. Uh, and you've also got the Fatal Floor thing, which grants you increased verse. And then Thrill Seeker, which grants you extra haste. All in all, Venthy is nothing special. Uh, I would personally say that it's the least fun. It's definitely the weakest. And in general, I would say avoid Venthyr. But, I mean, have some fun with it if you want. So, in summary, Necrolord is the best. All the time, it's going to just perform the best and provide you with the most consistent increase in damage, survivability, and just it complements the one minute Kiefer's playstyle the best. Kyrian is second best. You can play the Serenity build like I was talking about with Invoker's Delight, Alpha Tiger, even if you get Power Infusion on top of that. Crazy mana haste. And that does some of the best single target damage I've seen. Next up is Night Fae, followed by Venthyr. Now that we've covered the choice stuff, the talents, PvP talents, and the Covenants, Legendaries, we'll talk about the actual rotation now. How to play Windwalker. So, in terms of just your standard damage rotation, all you're doing is pretty much keeping your cooldown base abilities on cooldown. Right? You walk in, you sun kick, fury, and dragon punch. Highest priority, I would say, is keeping up your sun kick debuff to maintain that healing reduction. Use crane kick procs when you get them. And that's about it. Now, there is more stuff you can do. For instance, if there's a lot of pets around, tag them with your Tiger Palms and your Blackout Kicks to buff your Crane Kick damage so they hit harder. If you can stack multiple people up Fist of Fury, like drag a warrior over to a healer to Fist of Fury them both, go for it. If you can cleave and you can keep on doing it, keep doing it. Because then you can cleave with your Crane Kicks as well. You can cleave with your Boiling Dragon Punch. You can generate two Chi with your Chi Bursts. Alright. Windwalkers benefit a lot from being able to cleave. So if you can force a situation to happen where you can hit both of them, then try and do it. Also, look for targets to proc your Alpha Tiger from. So that you can maintain that base buff as much as you can. Maintain those stacks of Spinning Crane Kick. And that's basically it for sustained damage. Alright. As for your burst rotation, it's a little bit different. Your burst rotation is basically just fitting in all of your hard hitting abilities into a 5 second leg sweep window. As a general rule, what you'll do is Covenant ability first, so Burn Us Brew, Weapons of Order, Phalan Stomp, or Fallen Order. You pretty much use it always before everything else. As Necrolord for instance, I'll throw Burn Dust on them, Tiger Palm to proc Crit and Haste from the Legendary and from the PvP talent. And then Sun Kick, Fist of Fury, Dragon Punch. That's it. Before you do that, make sure you have 3 Chi or 2 Chi if you are going to do the Chi Burst trick. And if you have a Spinning Crane Kick proc, use that first as your first button, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a Crane Kick proc, I'm going to sit at 2 Chi, and I'm going to put all the variables in together to show you what, like, a ideal burst would look like under all those circumstances. So, I'll build up my stacks. There's been a crank kick to make it hit as hard as I can. Now, in general, you won't be doing this. If you have the burst ready, you should just go and do it. But if you don't have it ready, you can build up a crank kick proc and stack it up preemptively, just in case you get lucky. 
So now I've got a proc. I've got two chi. What I'll do is I'll incap my kill target. Burn up sprue. Sun kick. Tiger palm and pop stomach and fire. Crane kick. Sun kick. Fist of fury. Dragon punch. And that's it. Covered rotation, covered burst, let's talk about strategy now. When it comes to arena, your general strategy is going to be walk out the gates, use your expel harm to generate some chi, walk behind a pillar, and place your port down. Right. Then what you want to do is try and set up a kill. Now, if you're playing with a healer or a DPS that you know who can reliably cross CC the other target, then what you can do is do that burst that I just showed you, where you incapacitate the kill target, followed up with the burn dust brew, the leg sweep, and go for a burst like that. However, if it's a situation where your partner may not cross CC, then you might have to incapacitate the healer. Now, my issue with incapacitating healer is the duration of it is incredibly short, and you need quite a few globals to get set up. Let's say I incapacitate a healer for four seconds, by the time I drop burn dust, leg sweep, Tiger Palm, by the time I start actually dealing damage, the the incapacitator is basically worn off, right? It can be frustrating. Ideally, what you want is to have that incapacitate followed up by your partner, whether it be like a Hodge from a Paladin or a Fear, something like that, right? But if you can't have it followed up on, what you can do instead, if you want to cross CC with Incap, what you do is actually incapacitate during your Fist of Fury channel. Your clones will still channel fist even if you in-cap. So what you can do is like have a focus target, let's say. And I can be hitting this guy, right? I'm ready to do my burst, let's say. Alright, I'll come over to this guy, drop burn dust, tiger palm, start channeling fists, focus in-cap, use a crank kick proc, sun kick, and do damage like that. If you do it during the Fist of Fury channel, you will be able to finish your damage before the end cap ends. Now, there is a certain risk involved with this. The risk being they can pop cooldowns on them before you even start doing the damage, and you might get countered. But likewise, you know, if you incapacitate them first, by the time you've finished all of your globals, they can probably just use cooldowns out of the end cap anyway. However, in an ideal world, you land the double leg sweep right? Pretty simple to land in your average rating because people don't really take awareness into account, right? If you're a Windwalker and a warrior wants to kill you, he'll chase you everywhere. If there's a healer you can stack on, the warrior will chase you. At that point, you can land the double leg sweep and do your same burst rotation and cleave them both with Fist of Fury, Crane Kick Procs, and Dragon Punch. For some more cooldowns like that, overall, better for you. But... As you get to higher ratings, people will be more aware of the double leg sweep. People will, you know, start to bait the double leg sweep. For instance, what I do is like, I'll sprint in with Tiger's Lust and fake out at the last second. Or I'll like run in and teleport out. Or I'll run in and Fist of Fury to try and parry it. At least against other Windwalkers. Once you get to higher ratings, people will do similar stuff to try and bait the leg sweep to avoid it so that they don't get double swept because it's 
pretty bad to get double swept, but you can force it to happen in your average arena game against double melee. It'll always happen if they're both hitting you. Against melee healer comps, you can make the melee guy chase you and get double swept on the healer. And if people are standing kind of spread out, but not necessarily together, not in range of a leg sweep, what you can do is in cap one of the targets to keep them still. So let's say this guy, and then use ring of peace on the other guy to bounce him closer towards this target. And then leg sweep them both and then do your burst. By landing the double sweep, it's just more effective because you CC both of them at the exact same time and you do the damage while they're in crowd control. They're gonna have to trinket, use defensives and stuff. It's just sort of like a golden moment if that happens, right? So try to land the double sweeps. If you can't, cross CC with in caps or if your healer's gonna take care of that, let them do it. If you're playing with a priest, they can do chastise and the fear and you can in cap, burn to spur your target, go for kill. If you're playing with a DPS, let's say a Fire Mage, your Fire Mage can DB sheep the healer, you in cap stun the kill target, right? In general, you kind of just want to try and CC both. To summarize, overall tactics, cross CC your targets, land your burst, and then once your burst is done, continue doing your single target damage rotation if you can, try and cleave if you can, keep everything slowed, Use Ring of Peace and Paralysis to peel for yourself or for your partner. And basically play safe and delay as long as you can until you can do your next burst. And that's basically it. I quickly cover stats now. Stats are pretty simple. It's just versatility. It's going to be on all your PvP gear. Then you want like 25% crit chance-ish. And then the rest mastery. Haste as an actual stat for Windwalker isn't very good. It's just not worth getting in like really small amounts from gear, but it is nice to get bulk amounts from legendaries, for instance, or power infusion. You will notice those haste increases, but a couple of percent on your gear isn't going to make any sort of noticeable difference. Next up, let's talk about some macros. So most important, I've got a cancel aura macro here to remove protection, freedom, slow fall, cancel your flying serpent kick as well. Cancel storm earth and fire. That's in case your clones get rooted. By a frost nova or a mass entangle you want to cancel them if you really need to do damage because if your clones are rooted you actually do less damage and then also like a dismount and a stop casting as well so i'll leave all of these important macros in the description this is just for dampen harm and diffuse magic it swaps the button around whenever you swap between them disable this makes it so you can disable targets without breaking breakable crowd controls so i can incapacitate and spam disable it won't trigger my auto attack next up i've got these two stormworth and fire macros now these are actually pretty handy a problem with stormworth and fire is you'll notice sometimes you'll press it and your clones will fly off to the side of the screen hit some other enemy or something what this does it actually makes your clones immediately spawn on your kill target so I'll demonstrate the difference between these both, right? So let's say I'm in combat with a bunch of different enemies. Watch what happens when I press Stormless and Fire. They won't immediately go to this target. You see how they spawn there? And then they came here? Sometimes they'll just fly across the side of the screen. It's not bad here because they're close together, but that can result in them not even using like a Vista Fury or something. It can be really bad. However, with this macro, watch the difference. So much nicer. Okay, immediately your clones just spawn on your target and start doing damage. Unfortunately, it means you're going to have to make extra buttons for this. Now, what I've done is I've got two separate bindings, one to immediately use Fist of Fury and another one to use Sunkick. And I've got them bound to like control mouse wheel up and down. Next we have focus in cap. This is just a paralysis macro that uses paralysis on your focus target. So I'm targeting this guy, press it, uses it on that guy. Great for CCing a different target. This is a modifier paralysis macro. It makes it so that if I press the button that it's on with no modifier, it'll target arena target one and use paralysis. If I press control, it's arena target two. If I press alt, it's arena target three. Focus kick, same thing as paralysis except for your interrupt. Leap, this basically makes it so that when your Swen is out, 
when you spam this button, it'll you know, that's like a focus attack, and it will also just make them jump to your kill target as well, and give them the dash. The Tiger Leap has like an 8 second cooldown or something, so if I want him to go hit this target, he'll go jump over to him now after pressing it. So it's a pet attack combined with the leap, so if you're Zawen's hitting the wrong target, you can move him around. Next up is this Sap Macro. It cancels Jade Wind, that's just been in there from an old expansion. Kevin's Oozling, it dismisses him so he doesn't potentially break the end cap. And then also stop casting, so if I'm using a Crane Kick at the time, it stops the Crane Kick. I actually put that into my other macro as well, it should have been in there. And basically what that does is, you know, if I'm Crane Kicking and I want to use my Paralysis, it stops and it doesn't break. Finally, let's talk about race choice for Windwalker. So your best bet, if you're Alliance, it's human. If you're Horde, it's Orc. Reason being, Windwalkers are incredibly squishy and your biggest weakness is dying in stuns. If you're a human, you have an extra trinket for a stun that comes back 30 seconds earlier, which lines up with every touch of karma. And if you're Orc, you get 20% stun reduction. On Alliance, I can definitely vouch for Night Elf. Night Elf is awesome. Shadow Meld is great for avoiding predictable crowd control or spells, Chaos Bolts, Decimating Bolt, Greater Pyroblasts, anything like that. Storm Bolts, you can immune crowd controls. When you use Shadow Meld when spells are traveling, you immune them. So, if a warrior chucks Storm Bolt at you and you Shadow Meld, you immune it. You can also immune instant cast CC, but you have to do it very precisely. If I Shadow Meld, at the precise moment I get kidney shotted, I immune the kidney shot. It doesn't share a cooldown with Trinket, it's very skill based, but it's awesome. On the Horde side, I can also vouch for Blood Elf. This is because, despite the fact that it's been changed from a Silence to a Purge, you can potentially purge off really important buffs, and it actually helps you counter Paladins, which can counter you pretty hard because you can remove Bop, and you can also remove Divine Favor. You can remove Divine Favor and land a kick and kill them. You can remove Blessing of Protection and kill them. You can potentially dispel Combustion. You can potentially dispel Alter Time from Mages, right? Good uses for Blood Elf, but unfortunately, you run the risk of dying in stuns and stuff. Same with Night Elf. So, in summary, Human for Alliance with Night Elf as second best, Orc as Horde with Blood Elf for second best, everything else you can kind of just have some fun with if you like. And now that we've concluded races, the guide is pretty much finished as well. Thanks for watching and listening, hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any feedback, please leave it, I don't make guides frequently, I'm sure I could do better. If there's anything I didn't cover, feel free to ask me a question I'll try and get to you in the comments. Hopefully I will continue to make more videos in the future. I just need to keep myself motivated, basically. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.